hey what's up guys welcome back to this channel and welcome to another welding project so this video is all about building a foldable bed and these kind of beds are quite common here so that's the reason i decided to build a bed but quite stronger and stiff and also larger in size and you can build this with all the basic tools which you have in your shop so without further any delay let's build it Although there are so many tools which I think you can use in welding projects there are so many tools or the jigs which you can make and these are the bar clamps which I made by my own you can check that on the channel page and there is also a link in the description section too so these are called the saw horses and I made these by my own and uh, if you want to know much about them then you can check the video description there is a link about these videos the advantage of these saw horses is that you can fold them and they acquire very less area as compared to your regular workbench so this is the material which i'm going to use for this bed and it's mostly contained one by one and two by one square tubing and rectangular tube and the wall thickness is around two millimeter i think that would be pretty strong enough to bear the weight if a project have multiple straight cut then i always try to use my trusty chop saw it makes the job quite easy and fast as compared to regular angle grinder and also gives a nice clean edge which helps to make a good joint during the welding process so the frame is a double pipe construction and there are going to be two frame there is one by one frame for the inside portion and the another frame is going to be built with one by two which is going to be lie on the outside and the overall dimension is seven feet by three and a half feet for much detail about the cut list of the pipes you can check the description section so the first thing i am going to do is lay down my saw horses and over that i am going to place some pipes so that i am able to get a wide area to place those pipes which i cut down for the bed since the wall thickness is sufficient enough so i decided to do the chamfer first so that it will make a nice connection with other pipes this process also removes the burrs from the pipe and able to align them properly after that the first thing to do is to make the frame square you can use a set square for this but i think it's good to use this diagonal method to keep the frame square as possible because i found that this will provide much accuracy as compared to using of a set square in smaller projects set square gives you much better accuracy as compared to diagonal method but i think in this case the frame is quite large and beefy so it's good to go with this method to weld onto these kind of pipes the technique i use i call that a stitch welding in that welding i created the arc onto the contour side of first pipe and then jump over to the open end of the other pipe and in the video you can clearly see that how i jump from closed pipe to open pipe and complete the one stitch and then repeat this process until i complete the whole joint and the end result is in front of you and you can see that how that slag came out from that welding joint and that is a sign of good weld joint so for the vertical joint like this i always start from bottom and then end it up onto the top by doing this the slag always tend to move in downward direction so it will never occupy that empty space as compared to if you travel from top to bottom and you can see that how clean that weld bead came out. So to provide equal gap between two pipes I cut down these spacer blocks and these are 6 mm in thickness and this is how I am going to install them and how they are going to maintain a fixed distance over the entire length. I am going to weld them after few intervals so that they are able to maintain a symmetry. Once the spacer are welded up, I clean up 
that mess with the help of angle grinder and make them completely flush to the surface so that they will provide a nice clean reference during the second weld of the adjacent side so here you can see that along with those spacer block i also close the ends with the same material and that will provide a nice reference to that smaller stretcher piece since our frame is in square so there is no need to measure it again on this side you can clearly see that the one side is slightly bow inward so to counter that problem i am going to use some bar clamps and uh, some welding clamps if you don't have a bar clamp then definitely recommend you to watch the build video in which i made those bar clamps that would be an easy welding beginner project and there are almost no chance of blow holes because the whole project is made out of bar To prevent the middle frame from collapsing I need to install a brace into the middle and for that I am going to use this one by one square pipe and I am going to weld them slightly downward position so that they are not came in contact with the main base onto which the person has to sleep. For the joinery I place them at an angle and then trace out the required area which I needed to cut down and then cut it with the help of angle grinder and here you can see that at how that joint came up and i think if you don't want to cut both side at same angle then you can use this method that will save you a lot on those ends at an angle of 45 degrees so that they will match the same line So it's completely optional to make a legs at an angle so to do a repeated marking i made this jig so that i am able to transfer the same position at same side repeatedly but the disadvantage of this method is that i am able to mark that location onto one side only so to counter that problem i'm going to make a template so that i am able to mark that same cut out onto both side by flipping down just the template only once the marking has been done i cut down that area with the help of angle grinder and they are able to make a nice clean joint Once the leg has been completed I need to make a joint so that that leg can be folded that area to the opposite side and able to hold that platform and for that I am going to use some sort of bar pieces and going to make a U shape with that and here are those three pieces by which I am going to make a U and I cut down the middle piece slightly larger in size as compared to the width of that pipe which I am going to use as a leg. So that it will provide a free movement inside that once the mounting assembly has been completed i mark the location where i need to weld it onto the main frame although i weld it slightly closer to the inward after doing the tack weld i check it with the help of set square once everything was good i completed the full weld then i flip over the piece and secure them from the back side also since the welding area is slightly large so i have to repeat the welding multiple time to cover up the entire section since the legs are going to be a foldable position so i need to round over that edge which is going to be pinned inside that u shape so first of all i am going to mark the center where that hole is going to be drilled down after that with the help of pipe i transfer the semicircle onto that end so that the leg can pivot inside that u shape
so to provide a nice support to that pin joint i decided to weld this bushing inside that pipe so after cutting that bushing here you can see that how i'm going to install that inside that pipe After that I take the reference from the previously drilled hole and then drill throughout from that bushing. So here you can see that how this leg is going to be installed and uh, you can raise the leg or lower it according to your need. And uh, so to rotate that leg I need to mark the position of that pivot point. I am taking 3 quarter inch distance from top and the side and uh, at that position I am going to drill down the holes and uh, after that I am going to tap that with M8 thread tap so that the bolt can be locked down to its place. The portion of that bolt which is going to be held inside that bushing is kept free so that it would be easy for the leg to rotate. Now the leg has been installed and uh, the problem is that it will not move further back. So to sort out that problem I am going to cut down from the back side. I didn't know the exact method for this so I am going to do hit and trial method for that and I am going to cut down uh, section by section and then measure that required height which I needed for my bed. After that I connect two legs of half of the sides together so that when I move them inward or outward they will move simultaneously. So this spring is going to hold the legs to its place until any external force is applied and uh, it will also prevent the legs falling accidentally. So as compared to this I suggest you to have a cycle spring that have much tension and also have eyelets on both sides. So you don't need to do that work because I struggle a lot in making those eyelets and uh, after that I install those spring on all the remaining three sides so that the legs can maintain their position. The spring didn't work as I expected so I need to shift the position and uh, the formula is that you need to weld that bolt slightly away from the center of that pivot point. Only by doing this you are able to lock down the legs to its position by the tensioner spring. After I completed the two coats of black paint, I start the weaving process and for that I am using this roll of plastic strap. I don't know the exact name of this but I think you can recognize it by the image. So the weaving process is quite simple and for that you have to first weave from one side only. The only thing you have to do is just going round and round over those pipes and fill out the entire space with that strap. For the cross weaving I am going to use this black roll and the process is quite simple. If you start from the top then for the next line you need to enter from the bottom and then from the top and then from the bottom. So if you repeat this process and then and when you came for the second row you have to do the opposite of the previously done pattern like I show here. So if you like this video and wanted to support the channel then make sure to hit the like button. If you are new to the channel then recommend you to watch the other videos onto the channel and then subscribe to the channel. And I catch you in the next video. Till then have a great day.